Hello everybody, I'm Arashya and I'm here with the NEET 2025 and 2026 chemistry plan so that you can score 180 out of 180 in chemistry. This is going to be very different from other YouTubers because they just tell you the theoretical way of covering the syllabus and then doing everything. I'll actually show you how practically it has to be done and how I did it to score maximum. Okay, chemistry is a subject in which scoring 180 or minimum 160 plus like 160 165 170 it becomes essential reason is that competition is at its peak and biology and chemistry will be your saviors considering the fact that your physics is a little weak if your physics is strong everything's good then your selection is almost confirmed because bio and chemistry can be covered very easily at the end moment but physics cannot be covered in the previous session i talked about the physics strategy today our plan will be on chemistry which was one of my strongest areas, especially the organic part. I've seen a lot of students struggling with organic, so my focus will be on organic along with physical because physical used to trouble me when I was in class 11. If I talk about myself, so in class 11, my trouble portion was physical chemistry because I was not able to solve the numericals. The chapters like thermodynamics equilibrium used to irritate me a lot. But when I came to class 12, physical became one of my favorites. So at this point of time, I really didn't like it. But in class 12th, I started liking it. See, organic chemistry was always strong of mine. Reason is that in 11th, I started GOC very nicely. Like very nicely. I remember I started GOC on 25th December and I finished it on 25th February. So I took two months, two nice months to finish GOC. I practiced a lot of questions to at least ensure that organic chemistry is strong of mine and organic chemistry will not create a hurdle later on. This enabled me to pay more attention towards my weaker areas like that of thermodynamics, like that of equilibrium, like electrochemistry, chemical kinetics, all of these chapters. Is it okay? So let's start with the bifurcation of chemistry. Guys, one thing to understand is that subjects like bio and physics have somewhere or the other same strategy throughout. So they have the same strategy. Biology is NCRT based, theoretical, physics is numerical based, you need to practice more. But chemistry has various branches. It has three branches, physical chemistry, organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry. And all these three have a different approach. The students who are weak with chemistry or who are scoring below 150 in chemistry, the probable reason is that you didn't study uh, physical, organic, inorganic with their correct approaches. You probably studied everything in the same way, which does not work. Physical chemistry is calculative. It is the mathematical realm of chemistry. So if you study it like biology, NCRT, reading NCRT, then learning the numericals, this won't help. You have to practice. You have to develop the concepts. How do you develop the concepts? By understanding what your teacher is saying, by attending your lecture, whether you are in the offline coaching, online coaching, doesn't matter. And then I need to focus on the subject. First thing, physical chemistry is very calculative. It means you need to do calculations even in this year NEET physical chemistry dominated with 19 questions. Organic chemistry had 16 questions and organic had 15 questions. Physical chemistry dominated a lot this year. It is physics type. I mean the way you study physics, you'll have to study physical, but it's way easier than physics. It contains numericals and a lot of numericals and you can expect 18 to 19 questions in NEET 2025 from here because chapters are very important. You have very high thick chapters, thermodynamics, equilibrium, electrochemistry, solutions, a lot of chapters are there, right? Next we talk about uh, organic chemistry which was my favorite, my favorite chemistry and I've got all the answers correct in organic so I can guide you very nicely. Reaction based. Somewhere or the other, the 12th organic part, if I say 12th organic part is the major part, is revolving around the reactions of carbon compounds. If you don't know the reactions, there's no meaning. So my first step should be learning the reactions. And the entire organic chemistry revolves around the concepts of GOC. GOC, that is general organic chemistry, which you study in class 11, you need to do that very nicely. It is GOC based, so once your GOC is strong, you can expect amazing results in class 12th organic. Third, it's theoretical. Theoretical means NCRT has to be followed. If you're not following NCRT for organic, it's a big mistake. And number of questions which can be asked are 16 to 17, which is the probable number. Let me shift my screen that side. Just a second. Okay. 
talking about the last one inorganic chemistry which students usually don't like and the way it's depicted that inorganic chemistry mein exceptions the exceptions hote hain koi kar hi nahi sakta it's nothing like that in inorganic chemistry ncrt is the bible because every question comes from ncrt you have to understand this just a second yeah uh, ncrt is your bible and it has a lot of exceptions and trends so in an organic chemistry you're learning about all the elements of the periodic table except carbon even carbon is learnt a little um in group 14 p block but then exceptions are too many which is fine because every element cannot be expected to react and behave chemically physically in a certain way there are so many things even humans have human beings have so many exceptions right are we the same so how can we expect these elements atoms to be the same not at all and expected questions are a little less 15 to 16 because a lot of chapters have been deleted this is the overview this is the approach okay next now we are moving to how you should do it just a second give me a second guys hmm now i'm saying the approach of chemistry which most of the students which 90% of the students don't know and they suffer a lot your first step should be attending the lecture If you have been enlo- enrolled in the online coaching, you can attend it live or recorded. I'll prefer recorded because it saves your time and watch at one point five x, no two x, please. Two x to be avoided because it decreases the focus. Do you know psychologically it has been proven if you watch everything at a very fast pace, then it can have negative impact. So why to do that, right? One point five x is sufficient. Next, after attending the lecture, you have to. clarify all your concepts right and after that you need to make your notes see you cannot use others notes you cannot please try to understand that make your own notes an important point for physical chemistry is that include all questions which the teacher is teaching you in the class whichever questions are being there in the class the teacher is making you solve please solve them it's very important okay after doing lecture and notes so this is by default and 90% of the students do this lecture notes till here everything is fine but after that see if you are doing lecture and notes thoroughly 60 to 70% of the battle is won 60 to 70% of the thing is done but after that the remaining 30% which has to be your self study part that is not done by the students what has to be done in the self study part number 1 ncrt and dpp for organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry ncrt has to be read after the lecture if you are not reading ncrt you are actually getting behind the students because statement based questions are always asked for, from ncrt so for the preparation of assertion reasoning and statement based questions you know they'll take a statement from ncrt they'll change a word and you'll be trained and if you are enrolled into any online coaching they provide you dpps or practice sheets so please go for that dpp practice sheets are very important for conceptual understanding next next thing is re- revising the notes and ncrt after reading it once the other day next day you need to revise the notes or ncrt again okay notes and ncrt has to be done again third will be your module or your reference books um you can use the module or the reference books if you have and after that pyqs next step pyqs i so this is mainly for your mcq practice okay next will be test paper so giving the test is very important to analyze where you stand where you stand exactly to get to know that then in the test paper whichever mistakes you will commit error analysis is very important of those mistakes so that i know i am getting wrong over here and i need to improve and last step revision as per 147 rule so on let's say i'm giving you a brief plan um listen to me carefully uh let's say today is 19th may on 19th may i read structure of the atom structure of the atom i am reading right now and i am doing quantum numbers then what i did i made notes of quantum numbers i read ncrt of quantum numbers i solved the dpp of quantum numbers and i even did the module let's say after that what has to be done on 20th may you will revise it once again and after that on 24th you will revise followed by 27th 1477 rule means on the first day you read something then on the fourth day you will revise it again 
followed by the seventh day and seventh day should start with questions so you can probably revise the topic through questions and find out your weaker areas a very important concept over here uh, a myth or what to say confusion is that when to study chemistry so the right time how much to study chemistry this is very difficult for students because biology is your favorite subject so you will study physics is your weakest subject you will study but chemistry how to manage sometimes it happens that chemistry gets ignored so how to avoid that let me tell you uh, okay now see first step is 30 percent of your self-study time should be devoted to chemistry i am taking my example i used to study for 10 hours let's say um though i didn't study this much but let's uh, assume it let's take a hypothetical situation if somebody studies for 10 hours then three hours of his 10 hours must be devoted to chemistry self-study time i'm saying i'm not including lecture time i'm not including the lecture time understand that it should include notes as well as mcq practice plus ncert all these three things to be done as per your chapter and all okay the best time for me is the morning time and afternoon one which is from 11 a.m to 1 p.m because the early morning i feel you should study physics it's a very conceptual subject so you need to have conceptual understanding if you will not have the conceptual understanding there's no point so chemistry is best time i feel will be 11 a.m onwards if you are a night owl, then 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. or you can extend it till 12 noon, depending upon your preference. And in the evening, you will be attending your classes and lectures, so evening time cannot be used for self-study at all. So in the evening, you won't be doing the self-study. Great. Now, very important thing that the important chapters of chemistry, let's have a look at. In organic chemistry, the most important is GOC, which you need to do. Four questions can be expected from GOC, right? Um, next thing, alcohols, phenols, ethers, aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids, they are class 12 chapters, very important from board's perspective also, from CUET perspective and from NEAT perspective. So do these two chapters very nicely. And inorganic chemistry, if I talk about periodic table, chemical bonding are the base of inorganic or rather I should say the base of chemistry, especially chemical bonding. Chemical bonding is the most important chapter of chemistry. In the entire chemistry, chemical bonding is the most important and coordination compounds which is class 12th in organic is also very very important. Next, talking about physical chemistry. So in physical chemistry, uh, mole concept is the base for it which will help you in equilibrium, chemical kinetics, solutions and much more. Especially in solutions, uh, one topic is shared with mole concept which is your concentration terms. Okay. Then equilibrium, we can talk about four questions. It has two parts, chemical equilibrium, ionic equilibrium. This has to be done thoroughly and electrochemistry is a very lengthy chapter and a very important chapter. It involves the concepts of thermodynamics, equilibrium and your electrochemical cells and electrolytic cells. Okay guys, if you need some help, do let me know in the comment section. If you're struggling with chemistry, I can help you out please let me know and if you liked the video do not forget to like share and subscribe because it takes a lot of efforts to make videos for you guys and do put a heart in the comment section um, if you liked it and say bye to the digital pen now this digital pen is gonna help me a lot to guide you see I'm like my handwriting was pretty good from the digital pen and I didn't expect but then it turned out to be good okay all the best for chemistry scored 180 thank you bye bye